Hey guys, how's it going? Tiaz back again with another episode of the Atletico Madrid career mode here on Xbox One. We start today with some bad news. Diego Godin there being ruled out for two weeks with an injury, which is going to be a big miss considering we've got some big games coming up today. We're up to three games an episode now that we're out of the transfer window. Of course, yesterday we had transfer deadline day and a squad report, so there was only one game. Now we're up to three games per episode. The first of which is in the Champions League. A group is us, Juventus, Celtic and Pacos Ferreira from Portugal. And the first game that we have to uh, to tackle in our European excitement this year is uh, is Celtic at home at the uh, Vicente Calderon. Unfortunately, it's raining, so not the best of conditions in uh, in Spain. But we came very very close to taking the lead there, hitting the post, and then Adrian had his acrobatic uh, attempt well blocked by the defender. But Celtic were very very competitive in this fixture, uh, more so than I expected them to be. To be completely honest, Anthony Stokes finds himself in loads of space on the edge of the box. Not sure why the uh, the defenders weren't picking up that run, but fortunately for us. He rifled it past the far post, but we will lose in possession here. And it's Izaguirre, plays the ball into Anthony Stokes, into Chris Commons. The first shot is well saved by Thibaut Courtois, but Scott Brown finds himself loose on the edge of the box. Again, a track, a run not tracked, rather, from the midfield. And uh, we find ourselves going 1-0 down, so we had to step things up offensively, which is exactly what we tried to do. But Fraser Forster is an extremely good goalkeeper. Not only is he very, very talented in goal, he's also fucking huge. He's six foot five, very big built, and uh, has the reach of, you know, an absolute uh, giant. You know, he's just so, so hard to get the ball past. We've got a big goalkeeper in our goal, Thibaut Courtois as well, but unfortunately he wasn't able to do anything with that effort. And uh, we find ourselves 2-0 down just before half-time. I was shocked, to say the least, to be completely honest. I really didn't expect this game to be planning out the way it was. But Koke finds himself on the edge of the box again. And unfortunately, it's just a tame effort that doesn't really cause the goalkeeper any problems whatsoever. So I made a couple of changes to try and freshen things up. Susayeta for Afalai out wide and Diego for Koke in the middle. Two very, very attacking players, two very, very creative players, hoping to make the difference to get us back in this game and uh, Christian Rodriguez was the man breaking down the left-hand side before trying to stand the ball up for Gabby to get on the end of. Unfortunately, the ball gets cleared, but Diego's on the back of it. Just five minutes after coming onto the pitch, and that is an absolute screamer. Best way to uh, to have an impact on the game is to come on and get an assist or a goal, and Diego has done exactly that. He's not necessarily in my starting lineup as we stand with uh, Gabby and Koke, my uh, my starting two midfielders in the uh, in the middle, because we're playing a 4-4-2, which is uh, a formation doesn't necessarily suit the uh, the amount of attacking midfielders we have in the squad but it's a formation that is working well for us so far so we're just rolling with it as uh, as things stand but Insu is involved here playing the ball into Diego Costa tries to cut it back across and Fraser Forster stretches that great big giant frame of his and he's able to palm it away and unfortunately we weren't able to get ourselves back in it we do take a defeat from our first ever Champions League tie as Atletico Madrid manager so uh, really really disappointed not to uh, to have had any impact whatsoever in our opening group game we've got it all to do in the Champions League but we've got no time to uh, to recover we're straight back to uh, to La Liga action just a few days later fortunately the weather has cleared up it's now sunny away at Via de Lida and this ground was really really intimidating where you'll be able to see when uh, we actually cut to the game action the fans are so close to uh, so close to the pitch and it's actually quite a quite a generic trait with all of the uh, the, the stadiums in Spain the uh, the fans are really 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 close to the pitch and uh, they're really steep as well so it's like a just a solid wall of, uh, of noise and fans but fortunately we were able to uh, to deafen that noise in the early stages Michael Susayeta with a great strike putting us 1-0 up inside 5 minutes but Jeffrey was going to break down the right hand side and uh, it's obviously a player that uh, they've brought in from Sporting Lisbon after he moved there from, uh, from Barcelona back to Spain and he provides the assist for them to get back in the game in just the 11th minute so we're 10 minutes in and we've already had 2 goals and it wasn't going to Stop there. They're going to be on the attack again. Omar Ramos is going to break into the box. Play the ball to Javi Guerrero. Squares it across. And it's a lovely diving header from Oscar. And from 1-0 down, they've come back and hit us on the break. And it's 2-1 to Rio Valladolid. Rio Valladolid. And uh, I, I did not know what was happening to my team. Obviously, we've been performing quite well to uh, to date. We're unbeaten in the league. Obviously, not unbeaten in the Champions League anymore. And I was concerned that we were going to be uh, you know, disappointed or put, be putting in another disappointing display here. And the, the Celtic game was going to affect affect us psychologically and performance wise but we were able to go up the other end just a few minutes later and make it 2-2 a diving header of our own this time through Diego Costa so we're back 
at 2-2. Two, two. We're on level terms yet again, but you can tell the uh, the next highlight is going to come straight from kickoff yet again. It's Oscar, the uh, the goal scorer for via the lead, trying to break free. We actually get the tackle in. Susanetta makes a beautiful darting run in behind the back line. It's going to pick up his second of the game. What a goal! Wonderful technique to uh, to get the ball up and down and away from the goalkeeper into that far bottom corner. It moves like an absolute mother. It uh, it's, it's kind of a, a low. Uh, not necessarily one of the uh, the stereotypical banana shots, but it definitely bananas a little bit up and then down into that far bottom corner. And it, he's constantly bending away from the goalkeeper, which is exactly what he needed to do to find that bottom corner. And we're going to try and extend the lead just before half time if we possibly can. But David Villa's extravagant overhead kick is well saved by the goalkeeper this time. A goalkeeper making a rare save and actually not letting the ball cross the line and go into the back of the net. So we went in at half time with a score at 3 2. But as you can probably tell by the title of this episode, there's more goals to come. We head into the second half. Raya Vela delivered this time on the attack. We uh, we get the first block in, but unfortunately it drops to Omar Ramos. He's going to try and pull the ball back across goal. Smashes it off the upright. It's a fantastic shot from him. So much power behind it. And unfortunately they can't keep the ball in play and keep the attack alive. But we're going to go down the other end ourselves now. Arda Turan. Break it down the left-hand side into David Villa. Turns the defender really, really nicely. He's going to find the reverse ball back to Arda Turan, who this time finds the back of the net and we extend the lead. We went 1-0 up, we went behind, we've gone back in front and this time we've gone two goals in front rather than letting them get back in the game and pegging us back. But not too long after that, Oscar's through again and he scores again. It's 4-3 now in just the 67th minute. That's seven goals already. Now you'll be able to tell from the title that this was an eight goal thriller but which way was the final goal going to go we're in stoppage time at the end of the second half Felipe Luis picks the ball up 25 yards out from Cole and if there weren't already some absolute stunners in this game that takes the biscuit that is the best one that we've scored so far in this whole career mode it has to be said a wonderful strike especially from the left back as well you don't expect that from him I know Emiliano Insua as a left back does have quite a decent shot on him but I wasn't expecting that sort of goal from Felipe Luis and he popped up when we needed him to ensure that we pick up all three points. And the game ended 5-3. Definitely the most action-packed game that we've had to date so far in uh, in this whole series. We had the 3-3 draw against Barcelona early on in the series in the Super Cup. But that is the highest scoring game we've had so far. 5-3. So could we... Could we maintain that level of form we obviously bounced back very very well from the defeat against Celtic could we continue that vein of uh, bouncing back at home against Osasuna this was a much more difficult game than the previous one against Valladolid we're in sixth we've got a game in hand though and we can go within one point of top of the league if we were able to pick up three points in this one and Mankio was uh, involved here this game was literally just a couple of days after the, uh, the Valladolid one so I was playing a few rotation players it's weird we're not involved in as many competitions in Spain this year as we were with uh, with Chelsea in the first season but we're still having some fixture congestion issues which is something that uh, I'm not too keen on uh, I have to be honest but we're able to get ourselves into the lead through Adrian it's a fantastic header lovely stood up uh, cross towards the back post and uh, you see the technique on the header much better from this uh, from the second replay it's coming up in just a second to get it away from the goalkeeper it really is back across goal a wide arcing header just inside that far post and uh, we take a 1-0 lead but that was literally all that happened in the first half so uh, we go in at half time this one definitely a lot less exciting and a lot less action packed than the previous game but we headed into the second half and also sooner were definitely causing problems on Wu here breaking free he's gonna have a decent shot and that looked a lot closer than it uh, than it actually was it looks as if it was gonna oh well at first impression i thought it was gonna fly into the top corner but you can see it just arcs away and in the end it does actually go a good couple of feet wide of that far post but osasuna coming at me again cc takes the ball down and how many great goals are we going to see scored in this episode some of them we scored, but this one was scored by the opposition. An absolute cracker from CC. Just the way that he brought that down onto his chest over the top of the defender that missed the flight of the ball to keep his eye and to keep his concentration on the ball, bring it down and then hit it first time. You see the turn there, perfect. And what a strike. So much power and ferocity behind it. And that was all that was going to happen in this game. We unfortunately only take a point from this one, but we're still unbeaten in the league, which is... Uh, 
definitely something to uh, to build confidence on. But as you can see, fixture congestion yet again. Two days until we play Real Madrid, and then another two days until we play Almeria. So uh, we've got a lot of games coming up in a short succession. In fact, just two days after the Almeria game, we've got another game in the Champions League on the Wednesday. So we're playing three games in five days. Uh, so it's definitely uh, a lot of rotation that's going to have to be done in the next few days. But that's going to bring this particular episode to a close. As you can see, we sit 8th currently. Two wins, three draws from the league so far. We still do have that game in hand. We still can go within a point of top of the table, where Real Madrid and Barcelona are residing right now. So we've still got it all to do, but I'm definitely confident that we can do it. So that's going to bring this one to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. There will be another My Player episode coming to you later tonight. Do feel free to check your sub boxes around about 8 to 9 o'clock. That's going to be the uh, the slot that it comes to you at on a, on a weekly basis, Tuesday night, Thursday night, Saturday lunchtime, Sunday evening. So uh, that's all for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you missed yesterday's video, there's an annotation on screen over the left-hand side, little play button on the end slate. If you aren't subscribed to the channel and you'd like to do so to make sure you don't miss out on any of this series or any of the other career mode stuff that's going on here with the my player series then hit that subscribe button there's an annotation on screen a link in the description and of course your generic subscribe button and feel free to follow me on twitter as well at chisnoy gaming but that's going to bring this to a close thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you later tonight